There are lots of different ways to save your files in Photoshop. So many different ways, in fact, that for beginners it can be quite confusing of what is the best type of format to save your file in. So today in this tutorial we're just going to look in at the file menu and the Save As dialog box. There are other Save As dialog boxes, for instance, a save for web and devices, but we'll do that another time. So the Save As dot 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 dialog box, if I click on that and I'll navigate into whatever folder that I want to store these files into. And so for instance, I've got into a folder here called Photoshop Work. But if I wanted to go to a different folder, well, I'd just drop this menu down. I'd navigate around and go into the folder that I did want to save it in. Now, the key thing here is the formats that I want to save them as. So the format, first of all, the default type of format in Photoshop is just the Photoshop format. And when I select that, it will save whatever type of file that I'm working in with a .psd extension. Now, what this means is that everything will get saved exactly how I'm working on it at the moment. All the layers will get saved, uh, all, the, all the different types of features that I've applied, like layer masks and so on, they will all hold their status, their state that they have on at the moment. It will save them in, in that PSD file. So really, I can open up that file again at a future date, and I can hit the ground running exactly from the point where I've left off before. It will also save the history of all the different layers and so on. So I would always recommend, and everyone would recommend this, that whatever you do, make sure that you always save the work that you're doing in a PSD file. You can save them as other things as well if you want to send different formats to other people or if you want just different formats for uh, print or for the web or whatever. But always save stuff as a PSD so you can always go back to it at a later date and kind of uh, develop it or scale the project that you're working on in a different way. So that's the Photoshop version. If I save with Photoshop, uh, I should probably put a particular name on it as well to make it relevant. Uh, I could probably put the date on it as well. So, um, And that would be easy to find. So I'll save it there. As soon as I save that, this is always normal. Uh, maximize compatibility is to do with the way that different layers are saved in PSD files so it can uh, uh, look, be looked at or viewed in different versions of Photoshop as well. So we can usually click OK to that. And that's it. That will save it in there. And I can see the title bar will change with my new file name as well. I could close down Photoshop or bring that PSD file to any other type of uh, pro, uh, system where Photoshop is installed. I'll open it up and everything will be intact. The next type of way that I, I look at saving as, uh, if we want to save it as a different format, as we can see there's lots of different formats here, but I'm just going to go to the next obvious one which is JPEG. So JPEG is a kind of a format that's very useful on the web. Uh, it's got a kind of a low file size and it's especially good for any kind of image where there's lots of gradiated colors. So anything that comes from a photographic background, something that came from a camera where I can see natural type of colors going on, fading from one color into another. The type of file sizes we get uh, for images like that are often optimized in the JPEG format. But it's small, and the reason that it's small is with Photoshop is that it throws away all our layers and it flattens it down into one layer and I don't have any of the features that I've had before or I've added to it. So when I reopen up a JPEG format, uh, formatted image in Photoshop, all I get is one single layer with the pixels in that layer and I have to start uh, manipulating it from there. So let me save that. I'm saving it in the same folder and I can save it as a JPEG file in alongside my PSD file. So I've already got my PSD version of it, but I can also save a version of it as a flattened JPEG. So I'm going to click OK there or save. Uh, I get this JPEG options uh, option up and I can see the file size here at the moment, 1.7 meg. That's because the quality of the uh, compression algorithm that this version of JPEG is using is quite high. It's set to the maximum. But I can reduce that down to high and let's see the type of file size I get from that 540k so if I go to medium I get 331k so it really depends on what kind of quality that I want and you can try out the different variations of that and see if you can spot the difference between the quality generally if it's been used for the web uh, quality of 5, 6 or 7 is generally okay the reason that we're getting such high file sizes here is that the image that I have is actually quite big uh, if it was for a web and it was a normal type of web image, generally it wouldn't have anything over 50k or even 30k would be quite large for a web-based image. 
but I can click OK on that and that saves it as a flattened image. Now just because I've saved it as a JPEG it doesn't mean that I'm actually working on anything different here. I'm still working on a PSD file but I've just saved a version of it or a copy of it to a JPEG uh, file format if I wanted to send it off to somebody by email or put it on the web. Now lastly if we go into one other type of file format if I go file and again into the save as dialog box and I'll drop this menu down and I'm going to go right down here to where it says Photoshop PDF which is just the, the PDF version that I can save from in Photoshop. So I'm going to click on that. I've got an option here of whether I want to actually include the layers in the Photoshop PDF because PDF has the option of whether we want to flatten the image or whether we want to keep the layers intact. It really depends on what you want this uh, PDF for. If you're going to be sending it off to the printer and the printer is actually going to be doing some work on it, then you might want to keep the layers intact. If you're sure that it's all finished, ready to go, ready to be printed, or you just want to send it over to, to the web to somebody else, uh, then there's no need to actually add in the layers. Uh, Deselecting the layers option uh, will have the added advantage that uh, uh, it will be a lower file size. So once I click off the layers it's sure then that I want to save this as a copy alongside my PSD file so I can click save on that and I get some options once I click this OK uh, I get a dialog box lots of different options here in the way that I can save my PDF so I've got high quality print, uh, press quality smallest file size and so on. High quality print will generally result in a quite large file size. Uh, if I go for smallest file size, uh, I can then move in and kind of fine tune some of the settings I want to do with the uh, compression and so on. But generally, these kind of uh, presets are, are pretty good. I can just pick one of them and that will be fine. Let's go for the smallest file size and uh, I'm going to click Save PDF. It just takes a minute for that to save. And just to show you the difference in the file sizes of each of those three different formats that I've saved them in, I'm going to open up my Finder and I'm going to go to that folder, my Photoshop work, work folder where I saved all of those three images. And I can see these bottom three here. These are the three images that I've saved. So the first one was my PSD file saved at 1243 and I can see the file size of that is 20.4 megabytes which is very very large. It's a very very large sized file anyway uh, just in terms of the dimension, the width and the height and so therefore if you include all the different layers that I've added in there as well we have a very very big file. So I wouldn't send a 20.4 megabyte file over an email system to anybody, it would just be too big. But it's good because it keeps all my layers intact so it's good for working on my own system and I would always keep that copy somewhere on my own system where I've got lots of spare space to actually store that in. The next version that I saved to that was the JPEG. So I can see here the JPEG saved at 2 minutes later, 1245, and I can see the file size of that. I put the quality, I think, at a level of 5, and it gives me 397 kilobytes. That's a JPEG image, but that's completely flattened. I don't have any layers intact there. Uh, and if I was to open that up and start working on it, really, I would just have a background layer and I would have to take everything from that layer and build it up into whatever I wanted. And then the last version was the PDF. So PDF, uh, I saved it with a small file size and I can see that that's 520 kilobytes. The PDF is good that it's, it's very scalable. Uh, if I zoom in on different parts of a PDF file, it won't lose any of its clarity. I just clicked on that PDF file. I double clicked on it, it opened it up in a PDF viewer. And just to show you what I mean by not seeming or losing any of its clarity when I zoom in, meaning that it's a very scalable file, I can get in here to the edge of that W or any of my other letters. And I can see I've zoomed in quite a lot there to 6,400%, but I still see a definite kind of line at the side of uh, the edge of that character and a very smooth break between that character and the background that's behind it. If I go back to my finder and I move into my JPEG file, and if I open that, whatever the generic uh, image preview tool is in the Mac, uh, let's zoom in here a good amount Let's go up to compare like with like. I'll go up to the actual text. I can see here, this is uh, the E of my text. But I can see if I zoom in quite a lot, I can see some degradation there of the quality. And it's just, again, because 
I haven't saved it in a particular format that's good at scaling, generally the JPEG format is just to be viewed in uh, whatever dimensions that I have an image as, and the the human eye can make up the rest. But again, we just see that if I zoom in very, very closely, uh, the quality isn't that super good as a PDF quality would be. And that's the trade-off. I get a smaller file size with a JPEG, but I just don't get the scalability that I would have with a PDF. And then again, I get a smaller sm file size with a PDF versus the PSD, but I've lost all of my layers. So, key rule is, always save your work as a PSD, and then you can fire off other copies as well in other formats, but you always have the baseline of your PSD file saved somewhere, so you can bring back up all the layers and save all your work, and hit the ground exactly at the point of where you left off the last time you were working with that file. And that's file types of JPEG, PDF, and PSD in Photoshop.